Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. We have f of x plus 1 divided by x minus 1 equals x minus 1 all over 4x minus 2. And we're going to be solving for f, which means we're going to find an expression for f of x. I'll be presenting two methods, even though the second method is not always easily available. But for this problem, it works. I'm going to share with you that. So let's start with the first method. This first method is, is pretty common. Whenever you have f of something, you can just go ahead and replace the whole thing with a single variable because our goal is, at the end is find f of x, right? But obviously, you don't want to set it equal to x. Uh-oh. What is going on, notability? You don't want to set it equal to x because that would give you an equation. You don't want to do that. You don't want them to mix. Obviously, you can use a different type of x like the curly x, to, but it's hard to distinguish. Instead of that, so I'm going to go ahead and use another variable. How about y? You can use any variable you want, but by setting x plus 1 over x minus 1 equal to y, we get to cross multiply. And then our goal here is to solve for x because x is, you know, on the left hand side and we want to isolate it. To isolate that, we can go in and put these together like 1 plus y here and yx minus x here. And then factor out x, you're going to get y minus 1. And we could probably write this as y plus 1 and divide both sides by y minus 1. Then you'll get x equals y plus 1 divided by y minus 1. Wow. It kind of looks like the original expression, doesn't it? In other words, you found the inverse of this function inside the parentheses. In other words, whenever you have f of g of x and you're trying to find f, you should just compose with g inverse of x, and these two will kind of cancel out, leaving us with f. That's what's going to happen here. So let's go ahead and replace x with that. But if you wanted to use the same variable x, then you would probably need to replace x with this. Make sense? Same idea, pretty much. But if you don't like that, you can go ahead and do this, which is this, and then switch the variables later, which uh, seems a little easier. So now let's go ahead and replace x with y plus 1 over y minus 1. And remember, our original equation is given as follows. And now we're going to replace y or x with what? x plus 1 over uh, or y plus 1 over y minus 1. Okay, let's go ahead and do it. And on the right hand side, obviously, we have x minus 1 over 4x minus 2. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to replace these x's with something, right, on both sides. And that is given here. So x is going to be y plus 1 over y minus 1 plus 1 divided by y plus 1 over y minus 1 minus 1. And on the right hand side, I have y plus 1 over y minus 1 minus 1. And then at the bottom, you're going to multiply that by 2. So it's going to be 4y plus 4 divided by y minus 1. I just multiply this by 4 minus 2. Okay? Let's go ahead and simplify this expression. It looks messy, but don't worry. It's going to simplify a great deal. We get y plus 1 plus y minus 1 divided by y minus 1. And all of that is divided by y plus 1 minus y plus 1 because of the double negation, y minus 1. Now notice that the y minus 1 cancels out, the 1 cancels out, the y cancels out. We get 2y over 2, which is y, so this gives you f of y. And on the right-hand side, if you simplify the same way and forget about the denominators, because they're going to cancel out anyways, right? You're going to get 4y plus 4 minus 2y plus 2. And from here, you should be getting something like 2 divided by... 2y plus 6, and this is f of y. And of course, this can be simplified, and you can write it as 1 over y plus 3. But since f of y is, in terms of y, f of x from here, just replace y with x, is going to be 1 over x plus 3. So f is a rational function that can be expressed like this. And this brings us to the end of the first method. So do not disappear, because we still have the second method. And the second method is actually really really cool but again word of caution it does not always work but this is a special type of problem which is called a contrived problem 
that's why it works so this is my original equation and then I notice that there's an x minus 1 here and there's an x minus 1 here great let's do this flip the right hand side but I can't just flip it but I can actually write it as the reciprocal of something else how about writing the right hand side as the reciprocal of the reciprocal of this expression which is the original right great why am I doing this though well here's the thing I want to use this expression with a denominator of x minus 1 and I have the same denominator but I need to break this down I kinda need to break it down into pieces and when I do obviously I want to get a variable piece and a numerical piece but the numerical piece can be any number but the variable piece kinda needs to be uh, a multiple of x minus 1 in other words the, the denominator why because that's going to give me a number. Make sense? So here's what it's going to look like. So in other words, I don't know if I explained it uh, good, but here's what I'm trying to say. I want to break this down into the sum of two things, this one right here, so that one of them is either this one or a multiple of that expression plus some number. Make sense? So here's how I'm going to break it down. I'm going to break it down into 3x minus 3 because that's a multiple of x minus 1 the denominator and then the rest is just automatic x plus 1 and that just happens to be a good thing you know why because that gives me the numerator so when I break down the numerator one of them should be a multiple of x minus 1 the other one should be x plus 1 so you can pretty much think about it as by the way it could also be a multiple of x plus 1 but hopefully you get the idea so now this expression actually becomes much nicer if, by the way, we have f of, let's make some room here, we have f of x plus 1 over x minus 1 on the right hand side. And we're going to get something like that on the right hand side. I mean, I meant the left hand side and then the right hand side. Okay, great. Now if you separate these two things, first of all, this is just going to be a 3. And then the other piece is just going to be x plus 1 over x minus 1. This is what's really cool about it. Take a look. This is the same as that. You see, that was my goal. So in other words, I should probably say something like, okay, I want to write the denominator, 1 over something, the denominator, as the expression inside the parentheses times some number plus another number. So kind of like if you call this t, I want to be able to write the denominator as a t plus b where a, a and b are constants but a, a is one in this case so just don't worry about it make sense so if that's a t this is also a t so I'm getting f of t equals 1 over t plus 3 but that means f of x equals 1 over x plus 3 which is the same as what we found with the first method and that's great right and this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.